into the Cougar Tailgate, where BYU fandom lives. Here's your host, Lauren McClain. What's up, my friends? Thanks for being here with me on this beautiful day. Today, we're talking which of our favorite athletes we will defend no matter what. We all have them. Plus, we'll discuss who are the best athletes from the same family with BYU ties and the professional level. Later in the show, former BYU women's soccer forward Maddie Matthews joins me to talk about life after soccer and surviving parenthood with her husband and former BYU wide receiver Mitch Matthews. But first, let's welcome on the man who can throw a javelin a quarter mile, Ben Bagley. Hi, Ben. Quarter mile? Wow, I would have been really good if I could have done that. <laughs> One of the best in the world, really. You know what's sad, Ben? You and I both threw javelin. Yes. I recently went to the the state the state track meets at BYU. And they are so much better than I ever was in high school. Do you do you notice that? It's like, I don't know what it is. Each generation just gets more and more athletic. And it kind of is sad. It's, it's a great thing for it, our kids, well, but but sad for us. The best part about it is the, the further we get away from it, the better we get, too, though, in our own minds. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm throwing the job on a quarter mile now. Yeah, that's true. Unfortunately, we have the numbers to prove we weren't that good. I do, anyway. All right, well, summer is here, which means things slow down just a hair for you as a producer of VOE Sports Nation. So what are your summer plans? I know you're golfing. What else? What else you got? That's about a golf, and then we create stuff every day. There's a, even though the sports slow down, we don't. We do the show every day, and some great topics. I mean, you got you got Tom Homo and President Worthen and uh, Liz Darger at Big Twelve Spring Meetings this weekend. So that's all. That's all good. There's lots of good stuff to talk. About. They'll give us content no matter what. That's right. I know, and I love it. And uh, we had Chelsea Fairborn on last week, and she's the director of the Tony Finau Foundation. She talked about. Uh, how what you see is what you get with Tony. She said he's a great guy with family values. He's a prankster, but a hard worker. And he's a guy I feel like I would always defend. You can't talk bad about Tony Finau. I just, it's not like I know him personally, but I just feel like he's such a great guy. And I don't like if anyone talks bad about him. So Ben, you're a jazz fan. You're a Raiders fan. You're a golf fan. For you, who is the athlete that you will defend no matter what? Uh, that's a great question, and uh, I think when 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 you you let me know this what we're talking about, the first name that came to mind, I, I it came to mind. I'm like, you know, but why have I ever had to defend him? And I thought the only way I had to defend him is is when I ever got in these arguments with guys I worked with in sports talk radio, whoever the greatest athlete ever, and no, and and I would always say it's Bo Jackson. You can't you can't convince me otherwise, <laughs> and and and, and, well, and the, the thing is like. Well, he didn't have a long career yet yeah, because he got injured. But when he played, he was amazing. This guy was the best athlete ever, and I can't be convinced otherwise. So I don't know if that counts, but yeah. Bo Jackson's a guy who I would defend no matter what. It does count, and I think that's a great choice. And I think it's a choice that maybe not a lot of people would think of immediately. Go watch his 30 for 30. It's amazing. I mean, even even as a fan, I went back and I rewatched something like, I forgot how really good he was. I know. Bo knows, Bo knows sports. I love it. So I had John Stockton and Carl Malone because in my mind, they will always be the best guard forward duo. They stuck together for years and you rarely see that anymore where two stars stay together almost their whole career. And I know they definitely have their quirks like off the court, right? <laughs> we all know. Especially all recently. Seen- Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've all seen Carmelo in some interviews and John Stockton has his stuff. I still love him. I'm still that, what, 11, 12 year old girl in 1998, just watching my favorite jazz team and geeking out on Carmelo and John Stockton. I will still, Ben, defend them forever that they are one of the best guard forward duo. What do you think about that? Well, it, it's amazing. And, and, and you go back to John Stockton and Carl Malone, who, who were the duo or your idols as a youth. I go back to Bo Jackson, who was the same. And it's mm-hmm. funny how we'll quickly go back to that era of our lives when we were impress- impressionable young sports fans. Interesting. But I look now and I look around now and there's not a lot of people I'm going to try to defend now. Because, <laughs> because I, I've, gotten old, I've gotten old enough and I've been in this business long enough to know, I don't know these people. Like I can yeah. cheer for them. I can love yeah. what they're doing on the field, but I don't know them. And so I, I don't know if I want to stick my neck out on the line. But it's funny, the, the people, I, I mean, I've been blessed, Lauren. I'm 20 years in this business. I've got to know 
a lot of athletes and coaches on, uh, and I'm not going to say on a personal basis where I'm really good friends with them, but, but a little bit more than normal people get an opportunity to. And I've learned, I've seen some good and I've seen some bad and I've seen some uh, any, anything you'd like to think just because it, it's they're, they're humans as well. But it's mm-hmm. nice to be associated or get a chance to see the good in a lot of these people because some of these some of these athletes and coaches, they are people like you and I, and but not just that, they have platforms and they do great things for those with those platforms. And and Tony Finau with this foundation stuff is a great example of that we, we're lucky locally in Provo with Kalani Satake, who does the same. He's a fantastic human being. And he doesn't like people drawing attention to a lot of the good stuff he does. Kyle Whittingham at Utah, I know, don't say that for the BYU station, but is, is also a, a, another one like that. So so these are the guys I've been blessed to get to know, um, and I'll defend them. Um, another guy who I'll defend, and it, not, he was an athlete, and a great athlete, but, not, but our gen, even before our generation, but I knew him as a coach, was Jerry Sloan. Um, going to that jazz mm-hmm. thing, I got to know Jerry really well, and and I will defend that man. I just I have so much respect for him um, and, and everything he did and who 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 he was. That I I will definitely defend him. Jerry Sloan was such a great man, and what's interesting is on the court he came across as very very intense and almost. I mean, he, lots of coaches kind of have that mean look on their face on the sideline, but he was a a really great and kind man. I was at his retirement, and he was. I just really always remember how kind he was to me, and I was surprised by it because I didn't think that was his personality. So it was awesome to get to know him. So I love that he's a guy that you will defend. And I, you made up, you brought up such a great point that I think the guys that we defend are from our youth, because partly because we didn't really know them, we only knew the persona of them, and that was before social media and everything as well. You know, so we just have these guys up on a pedestal as some of the greats of all time that we will defend. And uh, unfortunately now some of their uh, quirks, like I said before, are coming out. We're getting to know them a little bit better, but I still have them up on a pedestal and I love it. Um, So Ben, after the break, I'll be talking to Maddie Matthews, who was an outstanding player for the BYU soccer team, as you know, and she happens to be married to Mitch Matthews, who was a standout receiver for BYU. I would love to be their kids agents, by the way, assuming they'll have a love (laughs) for sports like their parents which doesn't always happen. But in light of the Matthews, I want to discuss who the best athletes from the same family are, both in BYU history and professional sports. So let's start with BYU. Who do you have been for the BYU side? Uh, the last time you and I chatted was Mother's Day. And I'm just yeah. going to go back to the same answer to the Hampsons, period. At the That's end of the story, right. I, 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 I go back to the archives, download the podcast, rate <laughs> and review, and listen to what I said last time. The <laughs> no, I love it. The Hampsons. They are phenomenal people. Ben, you have Sarah, Jennifer, and Teresa, three of the greatest female athletes to come through BYU. So, of course, the Hampsons are going to be one of the first names that come up. For me, I had to go with the Kafusis because let's just talk about the immediate family, a.k.a. the royalty of Provo. Uh, you got the dad, Steve Kafusi, played for BYU, then coached for years. Mom, Michelle, is the mayor of Provo. Oldest sister, Alexis, was a standout hoopster for BYU. Then you have Bronson, Corbin, and Devin, who all played for BYU. Bronson's wife, Hillary, was a goalkeeper for the women's soccer team. And uh, shout out to their sister, Daryl, who played soccer at Hawaii. She was the one who didn't go to BYU, but she's amazing. But the thing is, it doesn't stop there. You have the cousins, Ben, Jackson, and Isaiah, that have made an impact on the football team. The Kafusi name equals BYU. And uh, let's just keep that pipeline going, shall we? Let's just keep bringing the kid Kafusis. When are are we renaming? uh, Let's see. Can't do Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Can't rename that. Uh, Maybe we just name one sideline, the the BYU sideline on on the field, the Kafusi sideline, because there's been so many of them that have been there. It really, they really needs to be a resection in Lavelle Edwards Stadium or something. I bet Kalani could make that happen. No, they're they're an incredible, they're just an incredible family. And there's a ton more, Ben. There's the Matthews, like we mentioned, the Lewises, the the Ungas, the Romneys, the Halls, the Haas. So many great families that have come through BYU. So now let's move to the professional side. Professionally, Ben, who's the first sports family? That comes to your mind. Well, as a, I, I'm going to give you two. As a Raider fan, I went uh, to, to what I know, which is Howie Long and his two sons, Chris and Kyle. All of them played in the NFL. All of them had really good NFL careers. And 
I, I think you're seeing some of his sons uh, even following his footsteps a little bit into the broad into a little bit of broadcasting. So that's really cool. But then as I was thinking about, I'm going to go outside of my Raider fandom and go to an another NFL family. The, the, you talk about royalty, the Mannings. Oh, yeah. And it started with Archie way back in the day, who was a great quarterback in college and in the NFL, although he didn't really win anything with the Saints because the Saints really stunk back then. But then Peyton <laughs> comes in as one of the greatest quarterbacks ever, gets himself a Super Bowl. Had little brother Eli comes in. And they have so much sway that they hijack the draft and say, no, Eli's not going to San Diego. We want him in New York. And everybody, everybody just gave in. <laughs> it happened. And Eli goes to New York and gets two, two Super Bowls. You've got Cooper, who, didn't play, who, who was an athlete but didn't play in the NFL, didn't really play at the college level, but is hilarious if you've ever watched him on, on the, the shows with the Manning. you got the Manning cast on Monday Night Football. And, by the way, Arch Manning. Cooper's son is the highest recruit out there right now. He's got Alabama, Tennessee, USC, no Oklahoma, Texas, every school in the country on their hands and knees on his doorstep saying, please, please, please come play for us. So he's got one more <laughs> year of high school, but, but this time next year, you'll be talking about, he'll be, he'll be one of, he'll be the headliner coming into one of these schools. And then we'll probably see him in the NFL in, within the next four years. So. Yeah, it's so just, the, the Manning name's not done yet. That's just incredible to me how some of these families can just keep producing insane athletes. I don't understand it. I, I want the ingredients, I want the key, and I want to make that happen because so far my three-year-old, Cash, Ben, uh, tried to put him in soccer, and he just laid on the field. So not a good start. <laughs> not a good start he's, for he's the McLeans. Three. He's three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm like, is that my son? Is that my son? No, I love Get it. Get up and yeah. kick the ball. Yeah, come, come on, on, man. I know you're three years old, but let's, you're embarrassing me. No, it was fun. Still fun to watch. Three-year-old, three-year-old soccer. All right. Uh, love the Mannings. Very entertaining and phenomenal athletes. I went with Venus and Serena Williams, Ben. Just pure power and domination. They've won 22 Grand Slams playing doubles. Serena has won 23 Grand Slams, the most by any player in the Open era, and Venus has won seven. I mean, can you imagine going onto the court and seeing Venus and Serena on the other side? You know, I, I would just shake their hands and I'd leave. I'd be like, good game. I'm out of here. You guys scare me. They're, they're just incredible. I can't think of two sisters that have been more influential in sports here in the U.S. than the Williams sisters, and they honestly... They make me proud to be a woman, proud to be an American, as silly as that sounds. And I just look up to them a lot. And I think they had such a profound impact on women's sports, African-American women in sports, and definitely the game of tennis. So I got to go with the Williams sisters, Ben. A amen to all that. And it's funny you say that as I'm sitting here watching a little bit of the French Open. Um, but uh, it's, 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 I saw this great, uh, and I can't remember what exactly the show was, but it was basically someone was taking a tour of Serena's house. And they go into a, what was she called her trophy room. And oh my gosh. Which is the I, size of our people, homes, probably. Yes. Yeah. And there's so many trophies. Like she's like, oh, and then there's this one. This was like the French Open and da 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 da. And then she's like, there's this beautiful one. She picks it up and goes, I can't remember which one this one was. <laughs> and I'm just like, I've got like one trophy in my whole house. I, from I from second grade. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my my PE participation trophy from eighth grade. I, I know what it is, but she's got so many of these beautiful trophies and platters that she's like, she's like, oh, I, yeah, I don't know what this one is. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, we definitely don't know what that would be like. And I haven't seen the 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 new movie with Will Smith with the Williams sisters, but I really want to see it. King Richard's. Uh, yes. There's a great line in there where he. And I, I don't know, once again, Hollywood, Disney, it may have been Disney fied, Disney fied not the Disney right. did this one. But there, right. there's a great quote in there where Richard looks at his daughters, looks at Venus and says, one day you'll be the best in the world. And then turns to Serena because he at this point sees her talent and says, and one day you'll be the best ever. I'm like, oh, wow. whoa, <laughs> that's awesome. I hope he said that. I don't know. I if hope he, did, he said that did, in real life, awesome. too. <laughs> and made it happen. My dad never said that to me. All right. Some of the honorable mentions are uh, the Watts, the Curries, 
the Gasols, the Harbaugh's, the Barbers. Those are just some of the other ones that I could think of. The Harbaugh brothers playing against each other in the Super Bowl has to be one of the greatest stories. I, I oh, was that's I, great. Mom I was and Dad, close what does that do to that? Mom and Dad? Oh, so proud, so proud. I love it. All right, Ben, thank you so much for coming on, my friend, and enjoy your golf game today. Hey, yeah, I've already got one down, no one more to go. So let's go. <laughs> All right. Coming up, former BYU women's soccer star joins me to discuss life off the pitch. Maddie Matthews up next on Cougar Tailgate. Back to Cougar Tailgate, I'm Lauren McLean. She was a standout forward for the BYU women's soccer team from 2014 to 2017 and is now living the dream as a mama of girls. Joining me now is Maddie Matthews. Hi, Maddie. Hi. Oh, so good to hear your wonderful voice. I seriously, you were one of my favorite soccer players to cover because this sounds so weird, but you were like a thing of beauty playing soccer. <laughs> you're like you're like tall and lean and you got these long strides I was like that is what an athlete looks like I love it I know that sounds very weird <laughs> no I'm so flattered thank you so you've obviously since playing soccer have become a mom how has that changed your life since becoming a mom oh my gosh probably the best thing <laughs> to happen to me the craziest thing too I totally underestimated how much work it is to be a mom but it's the best mm -hmm. job ever and I'm sure yeah, you would it, know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It flips your world upside down. And not only do you have one child, you're about to have your second girl. What was your reaction when we found out you were having another girl? I knew it was a girl. Like I told Mitch, my husband, I was like, I will bet money we are having another girl. So <laughs> I, we are beyond thrilled. I can reuse clothes now, which is really nice. I'm really mm -hmm. excited about that. So we're stoked. <laughs> Well, what, what was Mitch's reaction? Did he want a boy or was he excited for another girl? He, of course, like either way, we were totally fine. Cause he, you know, with Micah, our daughter loves girls, but like, he just wants his boy so bad. And so the fact that he <laughs> wanted a boy so bad, I'm like, I know we're having a girl just cause you want a boy so bad. So that was another reason. <laughs> and you're probably going to have like five more girls. You better prepare well, for that. We, yeah. We know we're having all girls. It's just fate. So <laughs> I love, love it. Yeah. Well, they are, they are beautiful. And I, I have no doubt they're going to be very athletic. I'm excited to see. Um, I want to know, are you and Mitch competitive with each other? Yes. Yes, we are. Especially in card games and stuff like that. Okay. And I was like, going to ask what, what are the main things that you guys compete in? Oh my gosh. I don't even know. Like, yeah, I would say like card games. Like we love the game nerds for those of you who like know what that is. Just any card game or ticket to ride. It's a board game. We get really competitive. Same with my, my family's pretty competitive too. And so is his. And so it gets pretty heated sometimes. And so we have to <laughs> calm down after and watch the office or something to get light. In the <laughs> oh yeah. But, Cause you both come from super athletic families. Who, who's, who has the most competitive family between the two of you? Um, oh my gosh. I would probably say, I don't know. They're both pretty competitive. Maybe his. Okay. That's yeah. Good to know. Yeah. So you, Mitch, you got to watch Mitch play in the alumni game when you probably never thought you'd see him play at LaBella Ridge Stadium again. What was that like for you being able to watch him play again? It was so fun. It was and just like seeing, seeing his face light up again and stuff like that. It was just, you can tell he was reliving his moments and all of that. It was really fun to watch. They did like, such a good it. job with that too and hosting that. I was really impressed because when he said that they were doing like a alumni game, I thought there was going to be a couple of people there. I show up and there's like a full stadium, like full crowd. It was, it was really cool. Oh, I know. They really did such a phenomenal job. I hope they do that year in and year out. Cause it was awesome. It was actually super entertaining to watch surprisingly. Like I'm like, this is going to be I terrible, but it was actually really, really fun to watch. Okay, Maddie. So you, you have been doing a lot of funny videos on social media and you've actually created a really great following, which I love to see because they are hilarious videos. How did you come up with some of those ideas? Well, some of them are just like real life stuff. Like, I don't know, my most recent video of like when the baby's sleeping and the moms are trying to be quiet and the dads come in and they're just like, 
being loud, <laughs> slamming doors, the cat and the mom's like, oh my gosh, I just put my baby down. So things like that you think of and you're like, yes, like that would make great content. So I guess just real life moments and stuff like that. So relatable. You, I think you pulled Thank a you. prank on Mitch where you, what did you put? Did you put a candy oh bar in a diaper God. or something? What yeah. was that one? It was a Snickers. So this one I actually found on, I think it was TikTok forever ago. And I was like, I'm going to try that when I have a baby. So of course I have that in the back of my brain. <laughs> And there was the perfect scenario where he was gone. He was just about to come home. And I was like, I'm going to prank that like Micah is just eating. This sounds so gross. One of her like poopy diapers. But while, so I put chocolate in a diaper and she was luckily just, of course, what kid doesn't love chocolate? So I set it right in front of the door before I walked in. I sprinted upstairs and he was like, oh my gosh, like freaking out. It was perfect. <laughs> it was so good. So funny to watch. And have you been surprised by some of the responses you've gotten from these videos? Absolutely. Yeah. Like uh, sometimes I'm just like how fast sometimes, like how many views you can get. And like, there's a video that I think will do well and it doesn't. Or like sometimes there's a video I'm like, oh, I this is a shot in the dark, but I'll take it. And it does really well. So yeah, it's kind of funny. <laughs> well, I love it. It's so much fun to follow you. It's seriously one of my favorite things. So going back to soccer. So you have played in the alumni games yourself as well, haven't you? Yes. Yes. What, so much what's fun. that like for you now that you're, you're quote unquote, one of the older players <laughs> to come back, yeah. what, Never which, which you are still happen. very young, right? What's that like for you playing on South field? That's like one thing I give like out of many things that I give Jen Rockwood like applause for. She does such a good job at like having the alumni come together. And with that alumni game, everyone looks forward to it. Like every year I'm like, okay, I can't get pregnant this month because I need to play in the alumni game. <laughs> like everyone lives for it seriously. So it's really fun. Of course, your body doesn't move as fast as you want it to, <laughs> but it's still really fun. I'm sure there's been a handful of pregnant women that have played in that alumni game. Oh, and there has, just... for sure. And they are <laughs> awesome. I am not one of them. I'm just too big of a pansy, but No, I do. don't blame you. I love it. Yes, Jennifer Rockwood, Rockwood she really does do a, such a great job. And speaking of her, she took her team to the national championship last year. What did you think of that season last year? I couldn't be more proud to be, like, an alumni during that time. Like, watching them play – and each player, no matter what their role was, came together. And it was such a fun season to watch. Everyone played their hearts out. And I was like their number one fan, truly. <laughs> they really were such phenomenal athletes. Kayla Coulihan is incredible and doing awesome in the next level. What, what do you think when you see who's coming back for this 2022 BYU soccer season? What do you think they need to do to possibly make it to that level again? I just think they need to have confidence in what they accomplished last year. And I know that they lost some players and again, like you lose players every year, but just those upcoming players having confidence that they can fill those shoes and have confidence in your game and that they can do it. Like they're so talented. So just having confidence in their play, trust their gut and take those chances. So that's what I would say. What's it like for you seeing Michaela Coulihan and, and like Ashley Hatch, who you were able to play with, have so much success at the next level? Honestly, that's my claim to fame. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I played with them. It's just so fun to watch. I couldn't be more proud of like what they've accomplished. And they're such an inspiration. And I'm just like so proud of them. Like, truly, I'm like their number one fans, I feel like, too. I watch a lot of their games and what they do is not easy. And they put so much work into it and they deserve all the success, truly. Soccer has been such an important part of your life. You you played it all growing up at a high level, then obviously in college. What is your connection to soccer now that it's been a few years since you've played? Um, just I don't have a ton of connection now. I've been asked to coach here and there. And just being a new time mom and trying to navigate that, I have felt overwhelmed taking on other roles, but I am starting to, you know, like open that possibility again, but honestly, just watching and attending BYU soccer games and getting going to alumni games when I can and watching Kayla and Ash and Cam Tucker and other girls that I know in the league too. I just, that fulfills me and gives me joy to see their su success. And so who knows, maybe one day I'll take up some coaching stuff, but other than that, that's what's happening right now. <laughs> No, I love that. I love that. And I felt very similarly when I started having kids, but, but you do see a future in coaching possibly, right? 
Oh yeah. I would love to coach. And I love working with kids. I loved, we did summer camps, you know, every year. And I truly loved that and seeing little girls like wanting to attend BYU and just like having those dreams and like working hard and just coaching and giving tips truly makes me happy and watching people succeed makes me happy too. So can definitely see that in my future. So I'm someone who I love sports, obviously. And I played in high school. I didn't play at the collegiate level. And I really would love my boys to play sports. I tried the my three-year-old out in soccer, and he just lays out oh. on the field. So that's not <laughs> going well so far. But I can't imagine being like you and Mitch. You guys were these Division One athletes, love the sports that you play. How do you <laughs> pass that on to your kids? Or you know what I'm saying? What's the balance between passing that on to your kids and, uh, and letting them do their own thing? So obviously, like I want my number one priority is letting them try everything. Like that's one thing I think my parents did a really good job at and same with his is put them in all different type of sports or even like piano and like musical stuff or whatever. And just like letting them navigate that. Now, of course, in the back of our heads, we're like, please like love the sport (laughs) and please be like dedicated and determined. Of course, like that's like what we want, you know. I would love right. nothing more to watch Micah run on the soccer field, but if she doesn't <laughs> want to do that, I will never force it on her. Um, we can just have fun with it or whatever she wants to do. Like we'll support her and whatever our kids want to do. So. Absolutely. I love that perspective. And I think it's the right one. Maddie Matthews, former BYU women's soccer standout. Maddie, thank you so much for coming on with me today and taking the time. Thanks for having me. I'm honored. It was so nice talking. You too. All right. We'll chat soon. See ya. And that does it for us today. Thanks again to Maddie Matthews and Ben Bagley for coming on the show with me. You can join the Cougar Tailgate virtually, of course, every Saturday at noon Mountain Time or download, rate, and review our podcast on Apple, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, or on BYURadio.org. This is Cougar Tailgate.